Vasileos Porpodas will uh, speak today about uh, throttling automatic uh, vectorization when less is more. Okay, uh, thank you for the introduction. So, can you can everybody hear me? All right. Okay, so um, okay, so I'm Vasilis. Uh, I'm a postdoc in Cambridge, and today I will present the work, joint work with uh, Timothy Jones. The title of the talk is "Throttling Automatic Vectorization When Less Is More." And I'm about to present to you a new automatic vectorization algorithm that gives us better performance by reducing the region that gets vectorized. So our technique is called TSLP, where T stands for throttling, and SLP is the, the state, like the, the, the current SLP vectorizer. Okay, so I'll, I'll get started with some uh, in very basic introductory ideas. So why do we care about CMD vectorization in the first place? Well, vector parallelism is a scalable form of parallelism. So as opposed to instruction level parallelism, you can get a much wider vector processor. So uh, uh, this, okay. So you can see here on this figure, uh, this is an ILP processor. It has several functional units and the functional units are accessing the, a shared register file in a, in, a random, in a random way. So each of the functional units can, a, can access any part of the register file. On the other hand, if you have a, a vector processor, each of the vector lanes can only access a specific part. So the axes are aligned. So this guarantees that the hardware is simpler and therefore you get higher performance, better energy efficiency, efficiency and this can scale to larger sizes. So it's of no surprise that the processor, processor makers have been supporting CMD vectors since at least the mid-90s in the general purpose processors. And the instruction sets have been, uh, have been, uh, recent, have been uh, kept up to date with uh, more powerful instruction sets and uh, more complete. And more powerful, yeah, more powerful and more complete. All right, so um, the problem is that as opposed to uh, ILP extraction, Vector parallelism does not get extracted at runtime by the hardware itself. So it is up to the software to do that. And we're trying to improve the compiler technology to, uh, to be more efficient at transforming scalar code into vector code. All right, so our technique is called TSLP. T stands for throttling and SLP is the super world level parallelism. It's, a, it's, a, the basic, it's the straight line code vectorizer that is out there in many uh, compilers. Um, it's, it's been implemented in uh, a lot of compilers, including the open source ones, like GC and LVM. And uh, in, in theory, it should be a superset over the loop vectorizer. So you could potentially uh, take a loop that gets vectorized with uh, the loop vectorizer. You should be able to unroll it a couple of times, feed it to SLP, and th that should get vectorized. And also, loops that code that does not get vectorized by the loop vectorizer uh, can still get partially vectorized by SLP. So think of it, think of a, a loop with complicated control flow that the loop vectorizer cannot, cannot vectorize. So in that case, um, SLP can still vectorize some basic blocks, some basic blocks or, or like a small fraction of that loop, thus giving us better performance. In practice though, the SLP vectorizers that are there in the current compilers are missing a lot of features. And therefore, the, it is common practice to have both vectorizers. So in, you, you first have the loop vectorizer, and then after that you have the SLP vectorizer. All right, so uh, now I'll briefly describe how the SLP vectorizer works. The input is scalar intermediate representation code. And the first thing that the, the vectorizer does is it scans through the code looking for seed instructions. The seeds are the instructions where we start vectorizing from. These are usually consecutive stores, like stores to consecutive memory addresses, or maybe reductions. Uh, after finding the seeds, then um, the, the vectorizer follows the dependency graph and is building uh, what we call uh, an SLP graph. So the SLP graph, the nodes of the SLP graph uh, contain the instructions that can be grouped together into vectors, and the edges represent dependencies. So once we have the SLP graph, then we can calculate the cost. So we use the, the compiler's cost model to do that, and we, uh, we evaluate what is the cost of 
the, co the, the code being vectorized and what is the cost of the code remaining scalar. And once we have calculated this cost, we compare them, and if we realize that the vector cost is lower, then we uh, uh, basically replace all the vector instructions, or, or, sorry, all, all the scalar instructions in the, which have been grouped by the vectorizer with their vectorized, uh, vectorized form. If the cost is not good for, for, the, for the vectorized version, then the code remains as it is. Right, so uh, there are a lot of, lots of overheads that are associated with vectorization. So SLP does not always work as we expect. Uh, these costs have to do with uh, the way that the vectorizer expects the data to be uh, placed on the hardware. For example, let's say you have these four ads, uh, and let's say that th these can be potentially vectorized into a single vector instruction, um, then it might be the case that the, the inputs and outputs require a lot of insert, insert and extract instructions to make sure that the, the data is placed at the, at, the, at the right place. So originally we had four scalar instructions and then after vectorization we might end up with eight scalars plus one vector instruction. That obviously is not, is not good and um, of course this is an extreme case but that gives you an idea of what are the overheads associated, to, associated with vectorization. All right, so um, I'll now try to motivate why we need to throttle vectorization, why vectorizing less is better. I'll use this example. Um, so th this code is uh, fairly straightforward. So we are reading from uh, array B. We are also reading from C, D, and E. And we are performing some calculations. And we are writing the result back to A. So what you have, you have to notice here is, is that the indexes of C, D, and E are uh, deliberately chosen such that these accesses are not aligned in memory and therefore these things will not get vectorized. That's important for, for the example later on. Okay, so the SLP, um, so the SLP uh, vectorizer requires uh, a dependency graph. So uh, it has, the dependency graph contains the stores. These are the stores to A. Then uh, it contains the, the additions. Uh, the loads from B, then the multiplication, then another add, another multiplication, and then we have the loads from the, the unaligned loads from D, uh, C, D, and E, basically. All right, so this is the data dependence graph. This is what the SLP requires to operate. So as I told you earlier, uh, the SLP vectorizer will start from the seed instructions and will try to form the SLP graph. So the seeds here are, are the stores. So these are stores to, to array A. These are access, consecutive accesses to, to the memory, and therefore these will get grouped together and uh, potentially vectorized. So th this number here, the minus one, means that we have actually saved one instruction. We have actually saved a cost of one by transforming these two scalars into one vector. So I have to point, point out now that um, this is done, like the cost evaluation is done using the compiler's cost model, uh, but so the, 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 the cost of each instruction varies, but for this presentation, I'll just assume that the cost of each instruction is one. So for this example, we, we, we uh, converted two scalars into one vector, and therefore we, we, are, saving, uh, we are saving one, one instruction. All right, so uh, the, the vectorizer will go up the dependency graph, and will try to form as many vectors as possible. So uh, after forming the, the vector of the stores, it will vectorize the adds. It will group them together. Then it will group together the, the loads. So up until now, we have saved uh, three instructions. And then we keep doing that. Uh, we we uh, group together the, the, the multiplies, and then the adds, and then the, again the multiplies. So far, so good. So we have saved six, six instructions up until now. So the problem now is that uh, we, we need to bring in the data from the scalar side to the vector side. Uh, and this, so this means that we need an extra cost for bringing in the, the scalar values into the, into the vector registers. So therefore, in order to bring in, bring in the values from these two loads, we need to add a cost of two because we need two more instructions to do that. And the same thing happens for the rest of the loads. And therefore, we have added a cost of plus six so the 
plus six completely eliminates all the cost savings that we have done so far. So this is exactly what we are trying to improve here. So we realize that all the, uh, all the overheads associated with vectorization have to do with this particular branch of the code. So uh, what if we completely eliminate, what, what if we stop vectorization earlier? Uh, let's introduce a, a cut into the graph and whatever is above the graph gets scalarized, whatever is below the graph gets vectorized. This is exactly what we do. So, um, so these are scalar instructions and therefore require additional insert instructions to bring in the data into the, the vectors. Uh, but the, the total cost of this code is minus one. So this means that we have saved one instruction compared to the scalar form. And therefore, therefore this code gets vectorized as opposed to the previous one which didn't. All right, um, so I'll briefly explain how the, the TSLP algorithm works. So we are reusing a lot of the structure of the SLP algorithm. So S TSLP is kind of an enhancement, like a kind of a plugin on, onto SLP. So uh, once again, we are looking for seed instructions. Then we generate the SLP graph. Then we uh, enumerate all the valid cuts we can uh, have on, on that specific graph. I'll talk more about it on, on one of the later slides. And then we apply the cut on the graph, which means that whatever is below the, the cut is vectorized, whatever is above the cut gets scalarized. And then we calculate the cost using the same method as in SLP. And then uh, we try to save the best cost, the, uh, sorry, the best cut, so the cut with the minimum cost. And then we keep iterating for all, all the, the cuts we have, we, have, uh, we, have, uh, we have calculated. We keep iterating until we, have, we find the best cut. So after finding the best cut, we apply it, to, apply, we, uh, apply it into the, to the code and we check whether the cost is uh, lower than the threshold. So this is basically vanilla SLP, right? Um, if the cost is lower than the threshold, when, then we replace the scalars with vectors and the code gets vectorized. If not, then we, uh, we, we don't make any changes. So the, the code will remain scalar. All right. Uh, so the evaluation of the, co the, cal the cal cost calculation is fairly important, so I'll try to explain how it's done for each specific cut. Um, so this is the, the same code as we had before. Um, so the, the, the cost calculation has two components, has the vector cost and the scalar cost, and we uh, subtract the two, so we, we do ve vector cost minus scalar cost. The scalar cost is the, the cost of the scalar code, um, so if we simply count the number of instructions we have, we have 18 instructions. So we have 18 scalar instructions correspond to this code. And then the vector cost is composed of the number of vector instructions we have plus the number of scalar instructions we have plus any gather or scatter instructions. So uh, I'll briefly uh, I'll just show you how, how we calculate this. So let's consider this cut, which is basically a dummy cut, doesn't do much. So we don't, so using this cut, the, the code doesn't change at all. Everything is scalar. So in this case, we have zero vectors, 18 scalars because everything above the, above the cut is scalar, plus zero gather scatter instructions, minus 18. So the total cost is zero. So we're not gaining anything by uh, placing a cut over there. That's, like com that's obvious. Now let's see uh, uh, another cut. So if you cut uh, the graph at this, at this edge here, we have um, one vector instruction. So it's, it's th these stores that are combined together. 16 scalars, so everything above the cut is scalar code, plus two insert instructions because we need to bring in the data from the, the scalar, so the, the values generated by the add are scalar, so they have to uh, get into the, the vector registers. And then minus 18 because that's the, the common scalar cost for all the cases. So we, we repeat this process and we see that uh, this is the, the sweet spot that TSLP has uh, found. So if you cut the graph at this point, we can actually vectorize the code. So a negative number means it is good. And then if, if we uh, let the, the, the vectorizer go all the way, we see that that's what SLP would give us. It would give us a cost of zero. So the SLP, the vanilla SLP would not vectorize the, the code while TSLP will vectorize the code. All right, so, uh, so far I have told you how to calculate the cost for all these cuts, but I haven't told you how do we calculate all the, the, the cuts? How do we enumerate them? 
So that's kind of, that, that's fairly simple. So we define a cut as the border of a connected subgraph that includes the, the root node. Um, and therefore, uh, finding all the cuts is equivalent to finding all the connected subgraphs of, uh, that correspond to, to this graph. All right, so uh, let's start with an example. So we have uh, the first subgraph contains just the, the root node. And then we can calculate from that the new subgraphs by appending the, the neighbors. So this one, this one has only one neighbor. So uh, the next subgraph we get is, is this one. And uh, that has two neighbors. So there, there are three ways of adding two neighbors onto this subgraph. So we can either add the left side, the right, the right side, or both sides. So let's check the, the left side. We get this subgraph. So that corresponds to a cut like this, right? So um, whenever we have an edge, a dangling edge over here, it means that the cut is at this point. All right, so we repeat the process. We keep adding uh, neighbors, and that's how we um, find all the possible cuts. So let's get back to this case. So, uh, uh, so at this stage, we, we, we are uh, adding only the, the left neighbor. Uh, at this point now, we are, we're adding the right one. So we are, uh, from one point on, we keep revisiting the same graphs over and over again, so the algorithm has to be smart enough not to follow the same path over and over again. Anyway, like uh, this process takes a while and it's fairly uh, complex and um, that makes the algorithm quite slow. So we end up with a large number of, of cuts that we have to evaluate. So um, an ideal algorithm that gives us a cut should just give us one cut, the cut that gives us the best performance, right? Um, so we, we're, trying to improve on, we, we're trying to improve the complexity and the intuition is that closer to the root node, we should do a, like a good search, but uh, closer to the leaves, then uh, searching doesn't help too much. And the reason is that if something goes bad, you should probably cut it off as early as possible. So what we do is fairly straightforward. Um, so uh, we are performing the, the same exploration as I, uh, as I showed you earlier, up, up until we get um, a, a certain number of subgraphs. And uh, this is like a, uh, like a hard-coded threshold. And for, for, these, for these cases, we add, let's say, given this example, given this subgraph and two neighbors, we either add the, the, the new subgraph that we generate either contains the left one, the right one, or both. So th that leads to uh, high complexity. But after having um, explored uh, a number of graphs that's higher than this threshold, we simply calculate the new subgraph by adding all neighbors at once. So this leads to linear complexity and it works pretty well. All right, um, so I'll briefly mention how we performed our experiments. Uh, TSLP was implemented in uh, LVM 3.6. Uh, we targeted uh, a fairly standard desktop processor and we uh, got some kernels from spec and NAS benchmarks. And we evaluated three things, uh, O3 means O3 with all vectorizers disabled, so this is scalar code. Then we evaluated that O3 plus with only the SLP vectorizer enabled. And then we evaluated O3, like that O3, with only TSLP enabled. So we have three numbers, O3, SLP, and TSLP. So this, this is what the performance results look like. Um, the black line is, uh, the black bar is O3. The yellow one is SLP and the blue one is TSLP. So there are two kinds of results. The, the, the first few of them uh, show that in, in some cases, TSLP is the only way to vectorize. Uh, so the SLP fails, but TSLP succeeds. Uh, in some other ones, we can see that T SLP gets triggered, so it does perform vectorization, but TSLP, well, when TSLP is, is, uh, applies, then it uh, vectorizes even more. And that can be shown uh, using the static costs. So th this graph shows uh, the, the static cost that is reported by the vectorizer itself. So this, this is the, uh, the numbers that the vectorizer thinks that it has saved. So sorry, this is the, the cost that the vectorizer reports as, uh, as cost that has been saved for, for the particular code. And um, obviously, uh, TSLP always out outperforms SLP, and that's by design. So we only trigger TSLP if the cost has uh, reduced. And therefore, that's why we see lower costs 
to, to, for, for all these benchmarks. And then finally, I'll just try to um, show you how TSLP explores all the, uh, some given, uh, a given number of cuts. So uh, this graph shows on the vertical axis, uh, this is the cost, so higher is worse, lower is better, and anything that's below zero gets vectorized. So the yellow line is SLP. So for this, uh, for, for this uh, kernel, for this function, um, SLP has a cost of plus two, which means that it cannot vectorize the code. And the blue line is TSLP. So the horizontal axis is the number of cuts that are being explored. So in the beginning, TSLP gives you really bad cuts, and therefore the, the cost that it calculates is really high. Then for the majority of the cuts, it has the same cost as SLP. But then finally, after like 23 of three uh, cuts, it uh, manages to get a cost of minus one. So it gives us vectorizable code as opposed to SLP. Another example is uh, this one here. So SLP in that case has a cost of minus three. So it would vectorize this code even without TSLP. But TSLP manages to, to do even a, even a better job. So it saves, yeah, uh, yeah so the SLP, TSLP gives us a cost of minus four, while SLP gives us minus three. And then finally, you can see that um, it might take a while. So in some cases, TSLP has to uh, try many different cuts until it reaches a, a good solution. All right, um, so to conclude, uh, I presented uh, TSLP, an improved automatic vectorization approach based on SLP, uh, which relies on reducing the, 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 re reducing the region that gets vectorized. So TSLP removes the non-profitable code out of the vectorized region, and it, it works by evaluating a number of possible cuts on the SLP graph. It estimates the cost, and then it applies the cut with the, the minimal cost. So we showed that TSLP performs better than SLP on standard hardware. And uh, if you need uh, to, to read more, please have a look at our paper. Uh, so this is my personal website, but you can find a link for the paper over there. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I'll be happy to take any questions. Hi, I'm curious, what does the, the evaluation of all the possible cuts do to the build time? Uh, so the question is how, how does the evaluation of the cuts affect build time? Uh, I can't hear you very well. So did you ask how, how, how long it takes how, how long it takes for the what's compiler? The, what's the impact on build time? A uh, build time, okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so for this particular case with a threshold of 50, uh, it, was, it was quite large. It was like about 10% uh, over the, the, the vanilla like the, the standard compiler. So we are tr actually trying to uh, work out, we're trying to figure out a better algorithm that does this a lot faster. Speaking of that better algorithm, have you tried to, for example, heuristically cut the graph in one place instead of looking for all of them? Uh, we haven't actually tried that, but that's a really good because idea. Maybe it, it looks that if you start, I mean, it's speculative. Speculation starts here. So if you kind of color the graph starting from good nodes and from bad nodes, and the boundary would be the cut you are looking for, right? Yeah, we're working on we're working on that, and I think that we can find a pretty good solution for that. Yeah. Uh, and another question unrelated. You said that it's in, it was implemented on trunk 3.6. Yeah. Have you ever planned to upstream it? Yeah, well, we are planning to, well, first we have to make it fast, right? After we do that, then, the, yeah, we were planning to upstream at some point. Yeah. In the charts that we saw, I think there were only uplifts, only increases in performance. Are there any known regressions? Oh, yes. Uh, I actually have some, yeah, like this one, right? Uh, so this one, so, that, so in this case, uh, oh, you get like worse performance with SLP and even worse with TSLP. But if you look at the static cost, you see that both of them are actually better. 
So I guess it has to do with the cost model. So, so the cost model could use some improvement. Well, it's either the cost model or like something goes wrong in the like back end, maybe. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Can you go to the cut in the graph, the cut graph? So I didn't see the insertion to form the vector. So for the two scatter trees. So you're talking about the uh, first, the first graph. Yeah. So here. Uh, this one? Yeah, this one. So, okay. so when you do the cut, and then you have two scalar values that comes from, yeah. they need to be inserted into a vector, right? Yes. So you don't gain, really. Pardon? So from the scalar tree there, you compute one value, and then you compute the next value. Yeah. Right? But you're not showing that they need to be inserted, too, into a vector. Yeah, so th that's taken care of by this. Uh, you can go here. back one slide, maybe oh, more. Oh, one slide, okay. Yeah. Like um, this one? Yeah, so here, oh. where you do the cut. Yeah. So you compute those two values. Yeah. Right? They need to be inserted. So the, but intuitively, it's, you didn't gain, it's zero, right? Whatever oh. comes from I need to be inserted into a vector. Yeah, so uh, we're adding a cost of plus two, but the cost of this code is minus three. Yeah, so, so we yeah, is the insertion, so, yeah. So why the cost is minus one in this case? Because of the load? Uh, I don't really. Minus three, plus the cost of the insertion. Yeah, so he gets the load, it's meant to insertion. And, and then also the other thing, the some of the hardware will have load and insertion to be merged yeah. into one instruction. Do you account for that? So for well, those? Uh, it's up to the cost model. So uh, all these calculations are querying the cost model. If the cost model tells you that that's how it is, then that's how it is. I mean, yeah. Any other question? Okay, then let's thanks, thank our speaker again. Thanks.